Hello everybody and welcome back to my beginner let's play. This is the Fortress of Weather Mountains, episode 6. One of the things I really want to get to today, well there's two things I want to get to today, is we've gone through the effort of building these water wheels, which means there's water down in our fortress on layer minus 10. I would like to take some of that water and make an underground garden. I also want to finish up the last of these bedrooms as we're hoping for some migrants this season. If we don't get some migrants this season, well, we're not in trouble, but that would be a little bit strange now, wouldn't it? So we do have more beds that we need to get placed, we do have more spots that we need to get set up. If I hit the zone button, we can see that all of these beds are currently set up and ready to go, with the exception of the few that haven't got doors yet. So we are working on those one at a time slowly. I'm just going to let the dwarves finish, oh, like, sealing all of this stuff up and getting things ready to go. We're also going to need to expand our crafting area here as it is tiny. Uh, also worth noting, I did find those gems, they got put into a bin, but, uh... You know, it, it's just, it, they got hidden in storage, shall we say. I'm going to shut up for a little bit. We're going to let the dwarves finish sealing all this stuff up. I'm going to get these bedrooms done, and then we're going to start working on those farms. So something that I may have failed to mention is I do have some brief additions that I have made to this game, uh, mostly editing the announcements.txt folder. Uh, now, the thing about this is I, essentially you can control what pauses the game when and when certain things happen. I do need to make a video on how to set these up a little bit at some point, but for right now, if you would like this folder, simply put it into your games folder in the data folder. In the init folder, there's a folder called announcements.txt. I will be pinning my announcements folders, uh, well, my announcements.txt file to the description of this video bundled with a little uh, screenshot of where you need to put it. Hopefully that will help and uh, without further ado, let's accept these migrants, see how many more we are getting, and then begin working on those farms. As you can see, we do have a bunch more of these beds set up. I do have some doors queued up, so we should be at the very least able to get all of these beds ready to go for our new additions to the fortress. It is late spring, so we shouldn't have to worry about trading for a little bit, unless some humans decide to show up, or some elves decide to show up, as the dwarves don't show up until fall. So we do have a good amount of time before we need to worry about actually having crafts ready to go. So what we're going to be prioritizing is gardening. And the other thing that we're going to be prioritizing as soon as I click this button is going to be what exactly do we have to have ready for the dwarves when they arrive. So we're going to so accept our migrants and we're going to go down to the map. We're going to quickly click center on fort because I just like to know where we are in relation to our friendly civilizations. Of course, the, yellow, the, the blue ones are our civilization and the green ones are allies. We're going to click on our civilization, and we are going to go to our home civ. So once again, just as a reminder, we've imported gypsum plaster for casts, and we've also imported ducks and drakes, just to have some fowl in the fort. And they would like figurines and bracelets, so that is something very easy for us to get up and running, which we can absolutely do alongside of our other projects for today. So because I would really like to get underground farming going, what we're going to do is we're going to be using this creek that I've constructed. Now, as you can see, there is this aquifer over here. Now, there's two ways that we could do this. We could use the aquifer to distribute water slowly, or I could use pumps. I'm going to use both just to kind of show you some examples. So what we're going to do first is we are going to build a little walkway across here. Now, this doesn't need to be out of any particular material. I'm just going to use what's closest, probably some kind of wood. And then once we get across, we are going to dig out some space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin digging up this way. We're going to dig out a rather large chunk of dirt here. And I'm going to try and do this as safely as possible. However, when we're talking about spilling water everywhere, it's only so possible to do it perfectly safely. Um, a pro tip, though, if you are pumping water, make sure that you pump water one layer down. As uh, instead of simply blasting water everywhere, it pours down and then you get less backwash, which can cause dwarves to get flung backwards into the water. So I will be doing my best to keep this safe. Another way that you can do it safely is by simply giving the dwarves access to the water uh, without actually putting them right next to the water. So if you channel the water one tile closer, which is the t technique I'm going to use for this lower half, uh, it's a little lot safer than the alternative. 
So as you can see, our, the number of dwarves that we have has climbed quite considerably. We're already up to 35 dwarves. The mountain home must have been 36. The mountain home must have been extraordinarily happy with our early trading. So not only are we going to need to expand our farming for food, we are also going to need to increase our crafting output because we have so many extra pairs of hands around now. Let's take a real quick look at our dwarves and get a good look at what we've got. We've got a couple carpenters. Well, that's always welcome. We have a few animal trappers and tamers which eh, aren't the most useful, but at the very least they're praying. Uh, we have a good number of surgeons, always welcome, uh, sorry, a diagnoser, which is always welcome, as well as a fishery worker, as well as two peasants and a garbage amount of children. Well, that's lovely. At least we'll have people that can assist with chores, assuming we leave those chores turned on. Keep in mind that children that are hauling bodies do not get very happy very quickly, and they're going to want more toys. Also, baby down here, Ognet, seems to be pissed for some reason. <sighs> Grumpy babies, as they are. So, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be continuing on with this digging. So, I'm going to simply uh, let them finish digging out this zone while I work on some workshops. So, we're going to construct a couple extra crafts dwarf shops, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, once again, we're just going to be using closest material, probably wood, or whatever happens to be close by. Now, the thing about crafts dwarf shops is... Almost any dwarf can do them, and they actually get nice little thoughts when they're doing crafts. Dwarves really like crafting. So because our mountain home would like figurines, and I think it was bracelets, was it not? Let's double check that. Figurines and bracelets. All right. Well, we're going to queue up, I think, a hundred of each. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here, we're going to go to work orders, and we're going to type in rock figurine. And uh, we're going to set this to be 100. Once again, this is running through the manager, so the dwarf that has a office assigned to them that is set through the noble screen right here. This dwarf, uh, our manager, so Kulet, our expedition leader slash manager, is now going to run over to their office and assign all of these jobs. We're going to queue up another run. Once again, we've got, we've got figurines already. We're going to do rock bracelets. Uh, so some of my dwarves are going to claim a couple of these, and that is fine. They'll get happy thoughts out of it. I mean, everybody needs a souvenir after a hard day's work or a hard week's work. Um, and uh, then from there, we're going to be making underground farming. So it's going to be a bit of a busy day, I think. The other thing that I would really like to get to a little bit today is... Um, above-ground construction. Uh, if I can't get to that today, we'll definitely get to that tomorrow. It shouldn't be too difficult. Now, the next thing that we're going to queue up while we're in the manager screen is we're going to queue up two things, two very small things. We're going to queue up a corkscrew made of wood. So wooden corkscrew. We're going to queue up one of these. This is going to be part one of our pump. We're also going to queue up a wooden uh, pipe section. We're going to queue up one of these. This is also going to be for our pump. We're going to need those and a block. Now, I'm just kind of working under the assumption that we have plenty of blocks because, well, we've had a dwarf working on these blocks for quite some time now, so I'm not too worried about that. While all that's getting done, I'm going to place some doors and work on these bedrooms, and once uh, the digging is complete, uh, I'll continue with the video. Well, all right, now that the dwarves are done digging out this little area here, something that you do need to know is if you are going to do underground farming, do not, and I repeat, do not smooth the ground because it will stop stuff from being able to grow. So what we're going to do now is we are going to channel uh, one dot in this way, right? And this channel is going to remove this wall and go one layer down and give us a little nook coming in this way. As you can see, the water is now flown in from our artificial river underground, and we're now going to go to machines and fluids. We are going to grab this here screw pump, and we're going to set it to go to the right. Now, this little screw pump is going to not sit over top of the water. It's going to sit right next to the water like this. Now, this little screw pump is a very dangerous uh, flooding tool as well as an incredibly powerful tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put as many safety mechanisms into this as possible. I'm going to put two blocks here, and we're going to have to be very, very careful with this because if water starts flowing backwards, it could drown the dwarf. Another thing that I'm going to do just for safety's sake is I'm going to go up to our... Uh, we could actually do this at the carpenter shop. I'm going to add a new task. I'm going to make a wooden grate. Just one wooden grate. We could do this at the stoneworker's shop. We could do this at the carpenter shop. We could do this almost anywhere. And I'm going to put a wooden grate down there. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to stop the extra water flow uh, from flowing back. And if the, the dwarf gets knocked backwards, uh, they will land on the grate and hopefully not instantly drown. But, y you know, uh, weirder things have happened. And uh, I'll have to teach you guys how to do coffins in this fortress eventually. 
So uh, fingers crossed here that that won't be an issue. So let's see. Is that great done yet? Uh, dwarf still sitting there, sitting there. Okay, we work. We, we should have it now. So I should be able to place that floor grate right here. Now, uh, once the floor grate is in place, I will replace these two walls. Here comes a dwarf. Perfect. Let's place one wall and two walls. Let's see if they can get them both done. They should be able to. And then all that's left to do is we need to click this button here. Start power manually. Something that's worth noting is pumps are one of the best methods of generating uh, strength for dwarves. So this is going to very quickly pump water. And so I'm going to stop pumping manually almost immediately. And there goes that splash of water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on again. We're going to have another dwarf come down and pump again. We're going to just do this a couple of times until it fills up this bottom corner. Be sure to be very careful with the play and pause buttons when you do this. It's funny, because normally in my own forts, on my own time, I'm way less careful than this. But for this particular video, I'm being very, very cautious. All right, let's do this again. Just need another dwarf to come... Oh, game's saving. Since the game is saving, it is worth noting that I just want to say, like, massive thank you to everybody who's joined the Patreon recently. The credits list is going to get a little bit longer in this one. Uh, two bucks a month on my Patreon gets you into the credits for these, or it's like 20 dollars a year at this point because I have a big discount on it right now. Just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching these videos and uh, let's get through this loading screen. All right, now we do have a good amount of water here. And remember how I was saying be very, very careful? Well, I think that we've got pretty much enough water, but what we're going to do is we're going to let this dwarf push just a little bit more. So I'm going to unpause, 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 unpause. Once you see that hitting about two, we're going to keep it paused, stop pumping, and let this dwarf walk away. Now, I'm, you may notice that I've been very, very careful with these. This is one of the easiest ways to drown a dwarf using this technique. It is extraordinarily dangerous, but we were able to successfully get it done without anybody drowning, which I would say is nothing short of a minor miracle. The water will all evaporate from here now, and we could actually get rid of this pump, but I think I'm going to leave it here as an artifact of the fortress. I kind of like to see stuff like this. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to begin retiring the upper gardens because we can grow the exact same things down here more efficiently. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing this seed stockpile. And if you've forgotten, we're going to be rebuilding a seed stockpile. So if you can't remember how to make a seed stockpile, now is a perfect time to remind yourself. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a stockpile for seeds, obviously. And it's going to go kind of up to maybe about here. It doesn't need to be ginormous, but it needs to be big enough to hold all of our seeds. We're going to uh, then set it as a food stockpile, and we're going to remove everything from here except for seeds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to back out of that menu and click on the little barrel, click on the number sign next to the barrel, and hit zero because we don't want barrels. No barrels. Barrels bad. And then from there, what we can do is we can begin planting. As you can see, there's still water here, but that doesn't mean we can't start building gardens. So we're going to go to workshops. We're going to click on farming, and we're going to make a farm plot. Now, keep in mind, these farm plots take just as much time to plant as the uh, previous farm plots that we were using, but they have approximately five times the output. Um, if you're looking for an extremely detailed, fancy, uh, optimal, great farming tutorial, I recommend keeping an eye on the YouTuber Tekkit, a good friend of mine who's working on a very detailed farming tutorial, right down to the most detailed of numbers and uh, being as nerdy about things as possible. So we're just going to let this dwarf get all of these boulders off of that and work on this. Of course, I wouldn't be too worried about the boulders going away because, you know, we do have that one stone worker's shop up there. But just to help get rid of those boulders a little bit quicker, I think I'm going to make us some extra stone worker shops. So I'm going to turn off use closest material and we're just going to plop down a couple of these. We're going to go one and too, because it's about damn time we get some more stone workers shops. We do need to expand this fortress after all. The fortress must grow, uh, and we haven't even gone down to the basement yet. We are now just getting rid of the last of these uh, bits of rock. It looks like we missed one tile there, but that's okay. So, uh, my personal uh, way of doing this is just doing one garden of nothing but plump helmets. So we're going to do one garden of nothing but plump helmets, and then right next to it, we're going to do one garden of plump helmets alternating with pigtails when pigtails are available. Now, of course, we could also use sweet pods uh, one season, which uh, are also not a bad thing to plant. Uh, it looks like I clicked plump helmets first, so they're just planting those. Uh, sweet pods are also brewable into alcohol. Uh, dimple cups are uh, used for plant dye, and quarry bushes are used for other things that aren't relevant, really. So we're going to be sticking with uh, plump helmets, sweet pods, and uh, at, like one seed maybe of 
pig, I was going to say one season of pigtails, but I have no pigtail seeds. So you know what? Let's just not worry about pigtails for the time being. We're going to go with plump helmets and uh, sweet pods for, for these two gardens. So these are all going to get planted, and that's going to increase our output dramatically. We're now going to fly up to the upper garden once again, and we are going to select our two different gardens here and simply demolish both of them because we do not need these anymore, like at all. And I know that might sound surprising, but we really don't. We also don't need these, this still or this farmer's workshop anymore either. We also no longer need this little uh, stockpile here for pigtails. So we're just going to get rid of everything because it is no longer relevant to us, nor useful to us for that matter. So I have an alert popping up here. What is this for? Uh, it looks like a human caravan from Menipsor Shadu has arrived. Well, that's exciting. They're coming to trade with us. I'm very, very like excited about this. This is something I wasn't fully expecting. This upper area, I think, is going to be renovated slightly, and we're going to work on turning this into our upper gardens. So we're going to fly back down here, and er like earlier, because I just demolished that still, you might remember that we did build uh, these two stills as well as these two kitchens. We're also going to need a butcher shop and a tannery up here in this kitchen. But for right now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make us another farmer's shop. Because I do like to have my farming, my farmer's shops close to my gardens purely for plant matter use. Uh, we can also do some surface farming for more plant matter if we so desire. And we can also uh, bring some of our livestock down here at some point soon as well. So let's let's drop a, a two, I think, farmer shops down here. We're going to use the nearest blocks. Those jet blocks are always pretty. We're going to do two of those. And then we're going to go take a look at what we can trade. I mean, we, we have been making crafts for a little bit, and it seems like the dwarves have been on that quite efficiently. Uh, however, the, the issue with, with selling off all of our crafts means that well, we'll have nothing to sell to the dwarves in a few seasons, so maybe we'll have to set up more crafts. Let's take a, another look at this uh, here diplomacy screen. The expedition leader, Kulet Ubul... Sedur meets with the human head treasure Destis Ramalaskopek. That's a name. Uh, Destis says, On behalf of the Merchants Guild, let me extend my greetings to your people. There is much to discuss. And uh, we respond with, uh, and then they say, There is much to share. We've updated your civilization and world info. And uh, we go, well, uh, that's great, but um, how about instead of updating our info and whatnot, uh, you bring us some lovely animals. So I'm going to request two things from them. I'm going to request raw green glass, because that is a very useful item for uh, artifacts. And we, well, rem you might remember, we requested ducks from the humans. So I think from these, uh, or, or from the dwarves, my bad. Uh, so because we requested ducks and drakes from the dwarves, I think that we should request a different livestock from the humans. How about uh, turkey hens and turkey Gobblers, uh, a very lovely combination of things, and they also appear to have black bears, which are a lovely livestock to uh, have and have tame around the fort, as they have a tendency to thwack baddies when they need to be thwacked. Uh, and aside from that, I think we are pretty much good, so we're going to move on forward, and they remind us all of the things that we've requested, and they say, well, then we've finalized the import agreement, feel free to go over the documents, and we're going to be like, yes, well, what do you need? And they say, well, we need rings and armor for next year, but that only accounts for next year's imports. Well, that's useful. Good to know. Rings and armor. Well, we can definitely produce more crafts. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be beginning on that quickly. Rings and armor, they say. All right, well, rock ring. Uh, we will get to that right away. And you know what? Let's do another round of 100 rock bracelets uh, just for those humans. So somebody commented on one of the previous episodes uh, that I should make stockpiles for all my items because my shops might be getting full. Keep it... Actually, instead of doing that, let's just increase the number here. Um, something that's worth noting. No, you don't, actually. <laughs> uh, shops still work just fine with all of the items sitting in the, in the shops. Uh, they do get a very slight speed debuff, but it is negligible at best, so... Don't worry about making sure that everything is in a stockpile. As long as most things are in a stockpile, you're probably in a good spot. We're also going to queue up some more uh, cloth making down here, just because it's close by. And uh, it might get immediately cancelled if we don't have enough cloth around, and that is okay if that's the case. Uh, we're going to then go to our trading depot right here, and uh, we're going to bring stuff up to trade. It looks like we do have some swords and shields lying around, which we need to actually do stuff with. Uh, but what we're going to do is we are going to bring... Bracelets. 
It looks like we got a good number of shale bracelets. They're not that valuable, but hey, you know, like we got extra supply before the dwarves show up. Might as well sell off some extras. And uh, since we're here and uh, they have stuff, we might as well also give them something else. Uh, everybody likes to meme about the mug economy, but let me be honest, mugs aren't worth that much. Uh, so what I will say instead is I don't have cut gems. Uh, I wasn't super duper expecting them to show up to trade this year either, so there is that. We do have helms and greaves and various other things that I've put together in previous episodes. We do have a good number of splints. Let's sell them some of those. Splints are actually quite valuable, oddly enough. And something else that I found are rather valuable are wheelbarrows, which I don't actually think I have any right now. But let's take a real quick peek under tools. Okay, uh, we do have one wheelbarrow, but yeah, screw it. We can throw the one wheelbarrow in. We'll make some more. All right, so... I found that I found that wheelbarrows are actually a rather good early game trading uh, item, unless you just want to sell all of your gems, which I could totally see why you wouldn't want to do that. Looks like they've brought many fun animals. They've got black bears and grizzly bears. We get a little preview here. Uh, what else do they happen to have? It seems to just be black bears and grizzly bears. If that's the case, I will definitely take some grizzlies. We can start breeding grizzlies right away. Get those all set up and good to go, and uh, have a very happy little set of grizzlies because who doesn't like some grizzlies and it looks like some more migrants have arrived oh my gosh we're gonna have to expand our bedrooms maybe that's what uh, the remainder of this episode is gonna be is just me pausing and building a bunch of bedrooms and then popping back in when the next round of traders arrive because oh boy things are things are speeding up a little bit here Fortunately, it does mean more hands uh, to make more uh, furniture, which is a good thing, meaning that it won't take so long to get all of our bedrooms done. So I'm going to begin trading now. So as always, remember that uh, your the amount of profit you're going to get is based off of your trader's skill. And it looks like everything that they've brought here is uh, is animals. So because they, all they have is a couple animals in a cage, I'm going to mark all of my items, which gives us 805 value which is almost nothing, which means I can afford a single grizzly bear, maybe. <laughs> um, looks like we're going to need to bring some more items if we want to get a grizzly. So because their grizzlies are rather pricey, uh, looks like, it does look like we're going to need to sell something of value to them. Let's see what else we have. Um, let's go up to here and go back to goods and scroll down a little bit and take a little bit more of a look-see at this. Because I wasn't super... I'm not super keen on selling them a ton of stuff, but... Fortunately, we do have more figurines that I could sell them. Um, we'll sell them some of our, you know, our tchotchkes, shall we say. Uh, so let's bring some of these up, and hopefully that'll give us enough value to be able to buy at least a grizzly. Maybe two, because I would be kind of sad if they brought all of these grizzlies and I can't uh, get together enough value to buy one. The black bears are a little bit cheaper, but... I would like a grizzly, maybe two, ideally. A breeding pair of grizzlies would be a lovely uh, way to get this fort started up, quite frankly. Uh, and also you'll notice that the general mood of a lot of dwarves is kind of veering towards the bottom. However, we are definitely top heavy with happy dwarves. So in general, the fortress I think is running pretty smoothly at this point and I don't have too much to complain about on that front. Uh, that being said, uh, I would still need to get some of these grizzlies though. So let's see if we can afford some in three, two, one. One items brought, and bang. What do we have? Let's mark all. What's our value now? Uh, well, they can't carry it because it's too heavy. But that's fine. If I buy a single grizzly bear, that will fix that. So the difference between grizzlies and black bears is grizzlies are war trainable. Black bears are not. It's going to be pushing it to get one grizzly. So I think what we're going to I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go with one lady grizzly. And, uh, see, yeah, okay, we're just barely selling enough to be able to afford a grizzly. So, you know what, we will, we'll give them the 550 profit, which is a massive profit, train up our, uh, our brokerage skill, and respond to them in greetings, where they say, the craft store ship of the dwarves is unparalleled, let's make a deal, and we sell them our tchotchkes, and they sell us a grizzly, and they sell us a single grizzly bear. Seems like a fairish trade. And then they say, ah, uh, oh, well, wonderful. Thank you for your business. And Pan seems very pleased with the with the uh, trading, which is good. That's a good place to be. Now we need to make a grizzly enclosure. Ain't that fun? <laughs> so let's, before we do that, 
because the grizzly will be fine in the cage. It can't starve to death or anything. Uh, we're going to go down here and we're going to expand our kitchens ever so slightly. So with the expanded kitchens, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be adding in a uh, butchery and tanning, the smelly schnapps. So you got to be kind of careful with butchery and tanning as uh, if, if the dwarves get a little bit too uh, overzealous with their butchering, uh, you may end up with food rotting. So just make sure that you have a steady supply of barrels and places for them to put their their foodstuffs otherwise they will get annoyed at stinky food eventually um because you know nobody likes nobody likes rotten food in in, in your food supply right and also we'll note that we have this little we have this, these gardens down here and we have the this kitchen up here might as well build a little walkway over there while we're at it so what I think we're going to do is because, as you can see, we have all of this water kind of dribbling in from the sides over here. I think what we're going to do, actually, is we are just going to uh, build up one layer. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to channel out, maybe not channel out, but I'm going to dig out all of this. And we're actually going to fill this in with a wall just to stop this wall from leaking here. And uh, then what I think we're going to do is we are going to build uh, sort of up to a degree. Let's see if I can make this work. I, I haven't done enough messing around with stairs in this version of the game, but we're going to dig up. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig over to here. That's the way we're going to do this. So if we look right here, it's right there. Okay, so we're going to dig over to this spot. It's a little bit too straight for me. I like bendy hallways, so we'll, we'll do a little bendy hallway there. And um, let's also round it off just slightly. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to channel out this little square here. And then I'm going to build stairs down instead of simply designating them to be dug. Because I think built stairs uh, are a bit of a challenge point for a bunch of people. So it, it, I think it would be good to have a little visual description of built stairs here. And then at the very end, we're just going to smooth that out before. Oh, actually, we could smooth it out after. So let's uh, just set these bottom ones here to be channeled instead of just dug. And it looks like all my miners decide to go on lunch break at exactly the same time. How typical. Uh, we're now just going to go take a look at where everybody's at. Looks like a bunch of people are down in the uh, hanging out down here. Also, we keep in mind, I've just noticed that we do have quite a bit of livestock that seems to have come in. We've got donkeys and various other things. So we're going to jump up to the surface here real quick. And we're going to add to our tiny little crappy pasture here. Because we do have quite a bit of breeding stock here that's just been moving in over time. So keep in mind, anything that would eat grass in real life uh, probably needs to be pastured. And they will start starve to death in your fortress if you uh, do not pasture them. So we're just going to get all of these reindeers, these yaks, and everything pastured uh, and set up and ready to go. Of course, there are some strange outliers, as for example, guinea pigs uh, need to be pastured, whereas all fowl, like birds, do not need to be. And the same with cats and dogs are also good to not be pastured. So once all that stuff is brought down, we'll be in a bit of a better spot. All right, so, like I said, we are expanding our kitchens. And we have an artifact. Things are getting popping. Things are getting busy. Things are getting busy. So because we have an artifact, we uh, now need to figure out which dwarf it is. Seems to be a possession, which means the dwarf will not gain any permanent skill increase from this artifact. But if we have all the items that are needed, uh, then they will be... Very happy, regardless. You're a weaponsmith. All right, that makes my looking for this much easier. There you are, strange mood. It seems to be Nil, who is possessed by unknown forces. So let's follow Nil while they go about and gather the items that they need. So what they're going to do, and you can actually follow along here in these notifications, is they are going to be building an artifact. So they are going to go claim their workshop, which in this case is the metalsmith shop. How lucky for us. And then if, as long as they're running around... They're doing what they need, and they're getting what they need. Looks like we're getting bismuth bronze. Oh, man, if we get a weapon out of this, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, I, those are pretty rare for me. Now, as you can see, it says that they've begun a mysterious construction right here. And if we click on this, it says that they are muttering. Uh, Sarek Brus. Uh, now, this is the name of what their artifact's going to be. If it's blinking various different words, like let's just say stacks of cloth, rock, uh, various other things of that sort... Odds are pretty good they don't have everything that they need. So what I recommend is look at the items that they are muttering. Look at what is claimed in the workshop down here. And that is, the ones that they don't have there is probably what they need. So if they want bones, you need to butcher a fresh animal. If they want cloth, 
you may not have the right type of cloth that they want, or you don't have any cloth. If they want stacks of leather, it's leather. If the gem's shining, they want cut gems, that kind of thing. Uh, this is something where I would recommend checking the wiki if you're confused as to the item that they might need. So, while our dwarf makes that artifact, we are going to get back to whatever I was doing, which I think is working on bedrooms um, and that kitchen up here. So... Let's focus on the kitchen first. So kitchen is quite simple. They're also getting close to where we're going to be building those stairs. While they're still digging things out, we're going to make the kitchens. So we're going to make ourselves a butcher shop and a second butcher shop. We're going to make both of those out of box out because just because it's sitting close by. And uh, we're going to jump back over to farming and we are going to make uh, two tanners. I'm going to make one tanner and right next to it, I'm going to make a second tanner. Doop doop doop. Once it's uh, guys, can we can we can we get can we get that? There we go. Uh, now that we've got this second tanner queued up, um, what's gonna happen here is they're gonna butcher things down here, and then fat is going to be automatically tilled at the kitchen, and leather is gonna automatically be tanned at the tanner shop, keeping things very simple to us. But right here, we have our first artifact. Oh my god, I'm so happy about this. Nil, the weaponsmith, has created. Shakri Brus, a bismuth bronze mace, and offers it to the Rampart of Raining. That is us. They've given us a gift. How kind of you, sweet dwarf. Let's fly back down and uh, take a real quick look at this dwarf's thoughts first. You're a talented weaponsmith with no official positions, and you resist sickness. We're going to need to find ourselves a military captain, I think. And maybe that'll be our goal for the next episode, aside from making more bedrooms, of course. This is a bismuth bronze mace. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of bismuth bronze. Very simple, but very, very, very clean and nice. Big fan of that artifact. Lovely, lovely dwarf. Well done. So... I think with all of that, I think that brings episode 5 of this more or less to a close. The one thing that I would like to complete, though, is this stairwell. So we are going to go over to this stairwell, and we're going to cut out two more tiles. And then once those are built or dug out, what we're going to do is we are going to grab stairs. We're going to go from the top up here. We're going to scroll down one layer to the bottom, and we are going to click. And then from here, we are going to make it out of jet and just give us eight blocks of jet which will then be brought over and we will have a nice little direct route into the kitchens for our gardens so as harvests happen annually oh gosh there's uh, there's a dead ulm on our uh on our oh well, i guess it's fertilizer <laughs> on our um on our garden plot so as uh, these get constructed they will then have a direct line into the kitchen making it much easier to bring drinks booze and everything else over that they may need um, and there is a naked... Oh, that's a child. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I was going to say there's a naked dwarf running around, but that, it's, it's just a child, so it's perfectly normal. Um, we're making silk bags still from the looks of things, but we don't have enough silk, so we're going to need to work on that. Uh, so let's get some more of this uh, of these plants processed that they just harvest up, harvested up on the surface, which we don't have enough of. Very busy times in this fortress. Seems like everybody's gathering plants. Well, I guess what we'll do here is we will leave you off. And uh, when we get back, uh, I will finish up these bedrooms, hopefully get all these bedrooms, get all these dwarves slept up, actually make sure that we get some more uh, cloth coming because I'm starting to see naked dwarves that are growing up, and also get this metalworking industry fully up and functional and build a military barracks. Thank you very much for watching episode five of this Beginner's Let's Play, and thanks to everybody who's been coming along with this journey so far. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.